Hey there, today, so on this clip, we're going to be going over four examples on uh, how to conduct logarithmic expressions. So um, before we get started, let's just do a real quick review on, on the properties um, of logarithms, okay? So review on uh, properties. All right, these are the following properties that I'm going to be using um, to condense logarithms in the examples that I'm going to be that I'm going to be doing today. All right, so let's consider these. The first one um, is the it's known as the product property. The product property has its roots in the uh, development of the whole idea of logarithms. So basically, if you have log of x times y, the product of the of the logarithmic argument can be rewritten as the sum of the individual logs that you're multiplying here. So the product of the argument can be written as the sum of the log, the sum of the sum of the logarithms of the argument. And then the other one is the quotient property. If the logarithmic arguments are being divided by each other, it can be rewritten as the difference of the numerator and the denominator of the logarithmic quotient. Okay. All right, uh, another uh, property we're going to be applying today is known as the uh, power property. It's just the result of repeated um, multiplication. So if you have n log of x, it's the same thing as log of x raised to the n power. So basically, you can either if the log has a coefficient, it can be powered up into a power, okay? And then if you have a power for your logarithmic argument, you can power it down into a coefficient, so it goes both directions, okay? So, generally, so in today's uh, example, we're going to be going from this expanded form, we're going to be condensing it, moving backwards in this direction, okay? That for these two. So these two up here, I, I normally call them my condensing, uh, condensed, condensing, uh, properties. Okay, when you're going from the right to the left, you're going to be condensing and then from the left to the right, you're expanding. All right, but we're going to be going in this direction. All right, let's take a look at uh, example. Uh, let's write on the instructions for the examples first. Uh, condense the following um, log logarithmic Expression. Okay. All right. For number one, we have the expression uh, log base four of five plus one half of log base four of nine plus one third of log base four uh, of eight. Um, eight. Okay. All right. All right. And just before we start, just a real quick note. I also like to call this uh, property right here the uniformity property. Uniformity. Uh, and the, the reason why I call it that is because this property can help you create uniformity with uniformity with your logarithmic expression, with your logarithmic, logarithmic terms, so that they can be combined. If the logs aren't uniform, basically the log and the base, then you can you can't combine them. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, let's take a look at um, all this logarithmic um, terms you have here. You notice that this log has a coefficient, this log has a coefficient, and this doesn't, so they're not uniform. So we're going to be using the power property right here to create both uniformity, namely log base 4 with all three expressions. Then we can then uh, apply the power quotient property, okay? And if you look at the power or quotient property, you notice that the logs do not have any coefficients in them prior to their uh, um, prior to their condensation. Okay, um, they don't have any coefficients, so we have to address that. All right. So the problem now is, how can we get rid of this two and the three? So like I said before, we use the uh, power property. We're going to power up this one half is going to become a power of nine, and this one third is going to become a power of eight. Okay. So that becomes log base 4 of 5 plus log base 4 of 9 to the 1 half 
plus log base 4 of 8 to the 1 third. Okay? The two ways of doing this, evaluating these two uh, terms, either taking it first or expressing this as a power and then using a power of power property. I'm going to use the um, radical approach to, to simplify these two, okay? So we have log base 4 of 5 plus log base 4 of the square root of 9. That has radical form of the 1 half power using the reciprocal property. Uh, and then plus log base 4 of um, the third root of 8. Okay? So, uh, all right, so using the n property, these are the way you expect this to use in radicals. All right, so now let's go ahead and simplify it. This becomes log base 4 of 5 plus log base 4 square root of 9. We know it's 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. And the cube root of 8 uh, is uh, 2 because we know that 2 to the third power is 8. So that's 2 right there. Okay, now we now have uniform logs, just log base 4, log base 4, and log base 4 of different um, arguments. Now we can now apply the product property, right? The reverse of the product property because we have the product, we add the logs. And since we're adding the logs right here, we're going to take the product of the, the uh, logarithmic argument, namely 5, 3, and 2. Okay? So this whole thing is going to become one unified log, log base 4, or a condensed log of 5 times 3 times 2. Okay? This plus has become product. If you multiply all three numbers, you're going to end up with uh, log base 4 of uh, 30. Okay, so there goes the uh, condensed form of the original logarithmic expression. All right, okay, now in mind, let's move on to question number two. For question two, um, we want to condense the logarithmic expression one half of the natural logarithm of one fourth plus one third of the natural logarithm of eight. All right. Now we notice that they have coefficients which are not uniform, even though that the uh, uniform in order to apply the uh, condensing property, we need to get rid of the coefficients. All right. So this one half uh, and the one third, these are problems. This is a problem and this is a problem. How are we going to address this? We're going to use the um, power property to power up these coefficients, okay? So I'm going to power up this one half, it becomes the power of the one fourth, and I'm going to power up this one third, it becomes the power of eight, all right? So remember that all the properties that apply to log base uh, n also apply to ln, because ln is log base e, it's just as not, this is a log also, all right? Special kind of log. So we're going to have natural logarithm of one fourth raised to the one half plus natural logarithm of 8 raised to the 1 third. The two ways of doing this, I can either express these as powers and use power of power property. Likewise here, I can use the radical approach. All right, let me use the radical approach. Uh, let me use the radical approach here, and then uh, we'll see what happens. So to do that, I'm going to write this as the natural logarithm of the square root of 1 over 4 plus the natural logarithm of the cube root of 8. If we find further, this becomes the natural logarithm of 1 half, uh, square root of 1 over square root of 4, these are properties of radicals, plus natural logarithm, the cube root of 8, we talked about that before, it's 2, because 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed, is 8. All right? On the left side, we'll have the natural logarithm of 1 over 2, plus the natural logarithm of 2. Now we have uniform logarithms. Now we can then condense. So if we condense, we're going to use the product property since we have an addition. We have a natural logarithm of one half times two. I can write out the factor in proof of one. All right, if I cross reduce or I can multiply and reduce, I'm going to have a natural logarithm. Two goes here once, two goes here once. A natural logarithm of one. Okay. I can simplify this a little bit further. Uh, this can be written as the natural logarithm of e to the zeroth power. Okay? Because not any number to the zeroth power other than zero is one. So natural logarithm of e, natural logarithm of e are inverses, so these two cancel each other out. So your final answer is zero. Okay? So um, if you had stopped over here 
or waited for zero, those two answers are correct. But L and one and zero are the same thing. Okay? So that's your answer for question two. All right, let's move on to question number three. Uh, for question three, we have the um, logarithmic expression. Uh, three log base two of x minus two log base two of x y to the third. Now our arguments are variables, okay, as opposed to numbers like we did before. Now the first goal is to create uniformity so it can convey the logarithms. Clearly our logs are uniform here. We have coefficients that are similar. So let's get ahead and address the coefficients because we can have coefficients when applying the properties. So to do that, we're going to use the power property of logarithms to power this up. This three becomes the power of the logarithmic argument, which is x, and this two becomes the power of these logarithmic arguments. Okay, so we're going to have on the left side log base two of x to the third minus log base two of quantity x y to the third squared. Notice that the entire argument gets raised to this power, okay, because you're doubling the whole thing, okay, so you have to keep that in mind. All right, now we're going to shift our attention to the second term, the one to the right of the minus. We have a product of powers, raised to a power, so we're going to use our property to simplify this by uh, simply distributing this power to the powers in the, on the end side, okay, our product of, of powers. So if this doesn't have a power, the default power is going to be 1. Okay, so let's go ahead. So we're going to have log base 2 of x to the third minus log base 2 of x squared y to the sixth. All right, now uh, what we're going to do next uh, is we're now going to condense since we have uniform logs, okay? So since we have a difference, it's going to be a quotient. The first logarithm is going to be the numerator, and then this is going to be the denominator, okay? So using the quotient property of logarithms, the reverse, we have log base 2 of x to the third divided by x squared y to the sixth. All right, so to simplify this, we just simply subtract the lower exponent from the bigger one. I mean, subtract the power of the lower exponent from the bigger one. Uh, so this is going to be log base 2 x to the 3 minus 2 using the quotient property of our radicals. Uh, you subtract the powers whenever you have a quotient of exponent, sorry, not radical exponent, over y to the 6. All right, so that becomes log base 2 of x over y to the 6. So that's the uh, condensed version of our original logarithmic expression. All right, let's move along to the last question, question number four. Now, what if we had uh, the logarithmic expression um, log base 2 of xy squared plus log base 2 of x minus 3 log base 2 of x over y? Okay. Now, to do this, um, what we have to do is um, Make sure all the logs are uniform. That's not the case here. We have a three here, which makes it um, different from these other two. So let's address that by using the power property. We're going to power up this three to become uh, an exponent or a power of this logarithmic argument right here. So what we're going to have is uh, we're going to have um, log base two of x y square plus log base two of x minus log base 2 of x over y, the whole thing raised to the third power. Okay? All right. Let's simplify that a little bit further. Um, we are going to have log base 2 of x, y squared plus log base 2 of x minus, and we're going to use the quotient of power property here to distribute this power to the quotient. So it's going to be log base 2 of x to the third over y to the third. Okay? Now that we have um, identical logarithms, now we're going to condense, okay? Remember our properties of logarithm, whenever I have an addition, it's going to be for multiplication, and that subtraction is for division. All right, so to do that, we're going to have 
log base 2 of x y squared times x divided by x to the third over y to the third. Okay. Now remember what division is, right? Division is the uh, is the is the same thing as multiplying the reciprocal, right? So I can write this as log base two of x squared x y squared, sorry, times x times changes to division drop, and then you flip this. You flip this to y to the third over x to the third because when you divide, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. All right. So there you have it. Now let's condense, multiply. So we have two to the seven one, two to the seven one. So using the uh, power property of exponents, um, the, the product property of exponents. When you multiply an exponent, you add the ex you add the power. Okay. So we're gonna have x has the power one here and a one here. So x times x is gonna be x squared, and then y squared times y squared to the third is going to be y to the fifth. You add the exponents. You're going to find a property of exponents um, over x to the third by itself. All right. Now to simplify this a little bit more, um, I see this x is right here. I can address that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the smaller power from the bigger power using the uh, quotient property of exponents. So I'm going to have x to the three. 3 is the bigger one, so you're going to subtract the smaller one, which is 2 from the bigger one, like that. It becomes log base 2 of y to the fifth, y to the fifth over x. All right, so there goes the condensed form of your original logarithmic expression. All right, so there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Or be a channel found on myfishshow.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.